Well, having been a bride not so long ago herself, Cheryl Washington is the perfect person to talk about this story. Thank you, James. I did jump that broom a year ago, and I'm happily ever after married. Thank you so much. Well, June is traditionally a time for weddings, and many couples in the New York City area are celebrating their culture with Afrocentric weddings. Monique Greenwood of Essence Magazine took a few brides-to-be to her historical bed and breakfast in Brooklyn. It's called Aquaba Mansion, and showed them the latest bridal fashion for the African-American woman. You know, the wedding day is a perfect time to really celebrate our ancestry. And India is recently engaged, and we just think that she has a beautiful, regal, and royal look, and wanted to choose a dress for her that accentuates that. This one is from Leslie Coombs for New Heaven Brides, and it's a slim-fitting sheath accented in embroidered gold. And this dress, we think, really epitomizes royal beauty. Instead of a headpiece, it features a hood that we drape ever so delicately over her beautiful dreadlocks. As an African-American woman, it was very important to me to have an African-style wedding. Kathleen, this is a perfect choice for you because you said you wanted something very simple and tasteful, but at the same time, it did have subtle touches of our Afrocentricity. Yes. And so Melissa Drayton, a local designer in Brooklyn, created this fantastic dress for you. The Essence by Mail accessories, of course, that work with this include the beautiful garter done in lace, the satin bag with beading and gold and cowrie shells. I especially love the headpiece because it has the cowrie shells underneath the chiffon. And of course, the cowrie shells are a symbol of prosperity and wealth. Yes. And that's exactly what we want for you on your wedding day. Thank you. We're now standing in the Ashante suite at the Quaba Mansion with Christine. And Christine is wearing a stunning look. And believe it or not, you can have this entire wedding ensemble for a little over $500. It's by designer Therese Fleetwood, and it's an exclusive design for the Essence by Mail catalog. It's made from a rayon blend chantique, two pieces, the peblum top and the slim skirt with a fishtail back. And of course, with something this gorgeous, you need a very simple strand of pearls. These by Liz Claiborne. We're in the sitting parlor at Aquaba Mansion with Melissa Drayton. Melissa is actually a designer who has created one of the wedding gowns we'll be looking at, but the one she's wearing is by Nigerian Fabrics and Fashions. Her headpiece is by Sherry Hobson Green, a designer based in Brooklyn. The bouquet is from Ethnically Yours. This gown is completely strapless and it features an unusual tie back so that you can make a grand entrance and exit. Now we're with Nina, and Nina really has a very elegant, almost Victorian charm to the way she's going to look on her special day. One of the showpieces of this look is really the hair, her crowning glory. And instead of using your traditional headpiece, what Robin Hannibal has done, she's actually taken her hair and intertwined it and sculpted it so that it becomes the headpiece. The dress is by Cassandra Bromfield. And it's a really fitted dress. The bodice is mesh and it's hand-painted, and what's really the accent piece are these um, beads worn around the hips. And of course, beads is a very, very much an African touch. For over 26 years, Essence Magazine has been a part of the African-American woman's life, and we're certainly there with her on the day that she says, I do. Over time, I've been of course, we want to make sure that you watch the Essence Awards tonight on Fox, right here at 8 o'clock tonight. And uh, those gowns were gorgeous. Didn't those brides look pretty, too? Well, joining us now in studio to talk with us about the whole tradition of uh, getting married, culturally speaking, is Harriet Cole. She's the author of the book called Jumping the Broom and also Jumping the Broom Wedding Workbook, which is just out. And she's also the president of Profundities, a style and, lit and literary production company right here in New York. And we thank you so much for coming on the show. My gosh, it makes me want to get married all over again. I sure wish that I had your uh, workbook a year ago when I was planning my own wedding. I guess that's a very popular uh, uh, assignment book now, isn't it? Well, I tell you, couples requested it. They said, we want something to keep track of all of those little details. So what we created was a book that has worksheets in it filled with every possible 
blank mm -hmm. for every question that you could possibly ask when you're planning your wedding so that you, you don't forget any of the details. Oh gosh, that is a <laughs> must then. Well, let's talk about uh, the culture. First of all, I would like you to describe what jumping the broom is. That is a very, very popular African tradition, isn't it? It's actually an African-American tradition. It was born out of slavery, and it's one of those bright lights. It was a ritual created for our ans that our ancestors created when they were not allowed the legal right to marry. So what they did was to use a broom, which is the symbol of householding the world over, and they took that broom, and when before the Big Belly West African drum was outlawed, they, they, at the crescendo of the, of the drum, the couple would jump over the broom, and that indicated that they were married. So it's really a spiritual tradition that was born out of necessity in this country, and many people really as a result of Roots, which, which documented it first in book form and then sure. on television, uh, repopularized. So many, many couples are including that ritual as, many, as well as many others in their wedding tradition. Right, now, also part of the tradition is the fact that families are, are supposed to give their blessing for this very proud union, yes? That is true. You know, asking for permission is something we, <laughs> we, we don't we know, know about. about that, right? We've heard about, you know, back in the day, well, in fact, back in the day of African traditions and today, as well as yesterday, it is customary, and it has been customary for couples to get the blessing of all of their family members. And I encourage couples to do that because what it actually does is create an insurance policy. It is not a union of two individuals, but instead of two families. Yeah. And if you consider your friends, that you've welcomed into your life also as family, you are getting the blessing of all of those people. So when the hard times come, and even in the best of relationships, hard times do come, yeah. you've got glue, you've got fortification that says, hey, I'm going to help you along. Let me support you through these times. Yes, it also eliminates the bad mother-in-law jokes, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Now, cross them. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't mean to cut well, you off. What, what happens is, Everybody says yes, and everyone gets yes. to know one another and really creates a family. Absolutely. That's very, very important. Now, cross sticks are also important to the culture and the tradition, aren't they? When we were researching Jumping the Broom, we discovered in Chase City, Virginia, there was a, a ritual of couples crossing sticks that indicated that they were married. And, and yeah. we have a beautiful picture in Jumping the Broom that shows a couple with big pieces of wood mm -hmm. that they crossed. And those were also the pieces of wood that were the first to be used to make their home. Ah, so the building of the foundation of this blessed union, of course. Absolutely. Isn't that great? Now, also, going back to the parents for one more second, it is also customary to give the parents gifts. I mean, we always hear about giving gifts to the couple, but in this tradition, it's also customary to give the gift to the parents. Why is that so important? Well, in many African cultures, there's something that's called dowry or bride price, mm -hmm. where... where the groom's family would offer gifts to the bride's family. In some instances, the bride's family also would offer mm -hmm. gifts to the groom's family. I'm recommending that we make a contemporary tradition where we give gifts to our, to our parents because, in fact, the parents, they brought us here. Yeah. They got us to the point where we are prepared to offer ourselves to each other as a couple, as family. So why not say thank you to them and give them a very special memento that they will treasure through the years yeah. that you've created your new family. All the best. I love this stuff. This is great information. Harry Cole, we do thank you so much for coming on the show. Off of the book, Jumping the Broom, and Jumping the Broom Wedding Workbook for everyone who is intending, of course, to get married. And you're also the special contributing editor for Signature Bride, the magazine for the African-American bride. You just do it all. Wish I had you here last year to help plan my wedding. Well, congratulations <laughs> on your On uh, my one year and your three years. There Harry, you and we thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, James, back to you. And if you have to get married, we'll have a book called Jumping the Gun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ladies.